Hello guys, and welcome to the theoretical coverage of the second round of the candidates tournament. Uh, the games were pretty interesting. Uh, I think uh, you will enjoy them if you watch them. They're quite fighting, no quick draws, fortunately for us. And uh, I will try to explain you the openings and the uh, theoretical discussions. We will start with the game Richard Rapport against Ali Rezati Ruja. They played the Sicilian e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, and then queen takes d4. So this is the first surprise. Of course, knight takes d4 is the most uh, natural move and the most played here, leading probably to Nidorf or to classical Sicilian. We are not sure. But after queen takes d4, uh, we reach an important sideline. Here, sometimes white starts at with a6, black starts at with a6, but uh, this is kind of a waste of time. Firuja played the main move, knight c6, and then after bishop d5, here is the first interesting moment in the game. Usually, the game continues bishop d7, and then after bishop c6, bishop takes c6, uh, white has a choice to take full control of the center after c4. Or to play knight c3 with some ideas, knight f6, bishop g5, later on long castle, and rook e1, e5 is coming at some point. Firuja played a6. He doesn't want to commit his bishop to, to d7, he forces the exchange immediately, and reach um, an interesting structure. Okay, we can say that the pawn on a6 will be weak later, but... Uh, the structure is quite playable. I don't, I don't like it that much for black. I think it's a bit passive. Uh, but the position is double S, so uh, white has some uh, lead development. Black has his bishop pair. And Rapport played the move c4, but instead of that, uh, in his wonderful database, Sundar Shian suggested short castle and. Uh, I'm not sure why short castle wasn't played. It's much more flexible. It gives more chances for an advantage, in my opinion. Uh, you can play c4 almost any time. We will see the difference. So e5 after short castle, and then there are two options. There's queen a4 with the idea to force bishop d7 or the move queen c7, and only then to play c4. Bishop d7, knight c3, it's almost never good for black to play c5. And after something like knight e7, to play c5 to ruin the structure. So, it's a pawn sacrifice, but uh, of course, we cannot say that these pawns are quite healthy. White has full compensation. I quite like also the move queen d3. And then if bishop e7, c4, queen c7, rook d1, knight f6, knight c3, white has a uh, small but sa stable advantage in my opinion. He will play something like h3, later he will play b3, followed by bishop a3. Uh, it's very hard for both sides to create something. After knight c5, always bishop takes c5 is possible. There's a game Van Gaal against Tidani, which continue like that. and. Uh, Later the knight is coming from e1 to d3, probably this one to a4, the pawn on c5 would be very hard to, to defend. Well, of course black can choose something like rook d8, but the position after bishop a3 or fall by triple your major pieces on the d file, in my opinion is slightly better for white. Both sides are just staying, it's very hard to, to take some actions, but still uh, it's easier to imagine how white can improve his position and it's not so easy to imagine how black can improve it. That's why the move bishop e7 is a bit suspicious. Knight e7 was played by Firuja, but in a similar position. If knight e7 here, this is the difference between c4 and short castle, white can play rook d1 and then after knight g6 to play knight a3. Knight is heading to c4, 
And the game, uh, Ruslan Poromarev against uh, Vladimir Fedosev continues f6, bishop e3, bishop e6, knight c4, d5, knight b6, knight f4, queen f1, rook b8, take, you take somehow, doesn't matter, and c4. So the engines evaluate this position as equal after queen a5, c takes d5, bishop d5. But in my opinion, white is slightly better. So, mm, still, it needs some time for black to finish the development. There are some hanging pieces, the bishop of d5, for example. And after a3, bishop b3, rook c1, most probably white has some small advantage. Uh, the knight will come from d4, from d2 to c4. And let's say that white is slightly better but probably objectively is equal i'm wondering if probably d5 wasn't a, a good move here there were some gains d5 take 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 rook d5 it's a pawn sacrifice but a very interesting one and here something like uh, bishop e6 immediately or even bishop takes a3 pawn takes a3 f6 followed by bishop e6 king f7 rook c8 uh, most probably uh, black will take the pawn back and most probably he has enough compensation for the sacrificing material so let's see how Firuja uh, continue how Richard Trapper continue he played c4 immediately now uh, uh, white's knight cannot land on c4 Firuja answered it with e5 and then after queen d3 he played knight e7 as we already discussed bishop e7 will lead to an advantageous position for white so knight e7 is the only way uh, to create counterplay and if black in the game uh, Sergei Zhigalko against Jeffrey Strong white, manage, uh, white plays quite slow and black manages to coordinate his pieces and this is the dream position. Now f5 comes, and black won pretty easy here. Knight f4, queen e8, queen is coming to g6 later, and uh, black won in a few moves simply here. The game continued like that, and it's already a piece up. So the game ended with mate. Knight f2, beautiful mate. So we can conclude that uh, white should do something fast. And Richard did it, he played c5, then in the game Hikaru Nakamura Jeffrey Shong, d5 was played, but after knight e5 I believe white is simply better here. So black probably has some compensation, but it's a pawn down, the knight on e7 is strangely placed, Jeffrey went for an end game after queen d3, short castle, long castle, take, take, but Probably he has compensation, but I believe white is better here. So there is also a move queen a5, which is very suspicious. First one move is knight d2, then after queen c5 you can make castle. Uh, then just doesn't like it at first, but uh, I believe white has tremendous compensation. And if you want some safer approach, you can play queen c3, just to go for this end game, very similar to the game. In the game was knight g6, c takes d6, queen d6, queen d6, bishop d6. Very similar position to what uh, a rapport has with black pieces yesterday, uh, okay, uh, on the first round. The difference is that uh, this time black has bishop pair. These pawns are weak, but the bishop pair somehow compensate them, compensate this weakness. Uh, this weakness is black's play is very simple, he just defended the pawn, play bishop e6, play king f7, and we can conclude that black more or less equalized here, objectively speaking. The problem for black uh, was that uh, the position is simply easier to play with white. There are some objects to attack, it's hard to imagine how white can lose this game, so white is out of danger and he has some free row, some free advantage here. Uh, the computer suggests a move like a4 here and said that black has no problems at all. Firuja played bishop before and after king e2, knight h4, he went to some trouble here. 
he went to some trouble. Uh, here, who came? Well, was probably stronger. Doesn't matter. Ricard played knight c4, and even this endgame, which is more or less equal, uh, uh, Ricard managed to outplay Talereza, and he was completely winning in a rook endgame, but uh, the game at the end ended in a draw after some inaccuracies. We can stop our coverage here. Uh, we can say that, uh, theoretically speaking, Firuja's idea to play a6 on move 5, followed by this e5 and knight e7, is very interesting. And uh, even if white is better, it's really hard to prove how. Um, I believe that instead of c4, probably short castle uh, is a better idea. But even here, after knight e7, rook d1, uh, this move d5 is really interesting. I'm not sure what uh, uh, Alireza was planning here, but I suppose that it was something like that because this could uh, solve black's problems by force. Here, if you don't take the pawn, then uh, bishop e6 will come, followed by bishop e7 and short castle, also e4 is kind of a threat later on, so you need to take the pawn, otherwise you're simply worse. But this leads by force to this endgame, which I think is quite defendable, so it's possible that this line is uh, solves black problem, definitely looks very interesting, and uh, white has no time to play slow move, like knight c3 for example, knight g6. One. If white played some natural moves, then after bishop e7, short castle f5, black is even better. Okay, so this was about the game Arahport against Alireza. Then we will move to the game Hikaru Nakamura against Timur Rajabov, the only decisive game of the round. Uh, Nakamura yesterday played Berlin defense with black, he lost against Caruana. And on round two, he faces Berlin defense with white. Nowadays, there are not so many players who want to enter the main line, which is this one. The practice proved that black managed successfully uh, to solve his problems in this endgame. We're not going to, to details, I'm pretty sure that we'll have, uh, we'll have time to analyze this later in the tournament. The other uh, line is rook e1, also mm, very, very solid. So most of the players go for d3. d3 looks, uh, leads to a slow game, black has many options. Uh, bishop c5 is the main move here. And now white can take on c6, uh, white can play short castle, he played knight bg2, this structure was analyzed yesterday by Grigor, and also by Alexander Belchev in his uh, wonderful database about the exchange structure. Nakamura played a tricky move here, knight d2. Uh, why this is tricky? First, you're not committed to c3, so the ideas with sh uh, quick d5 are not very good. And if you already make short castle, if you commit it, put the king on the king side, then you then white can take. Nakamura has a game, he beat Carlsen here. There is an interesting new idea here, b takes e6, knight e5, rook e8, knight f3, d5, played by some Shankland, and uh, white definitely needs to solve some problems here. This looks quite, uh, quite good, but there are just a few games, so the practice will show. But after the more common d takes c6, knight c4, knight d7, white didn't make short castle, and he can try to play without short castle, with the king in the center or on the king side, like queen e2, rook e8, bishop d2, full by long castle, and start pushing the pawns on the king side. Carlsen played b5 against Nakamura, and after knight e3, knight f8, Nakamura went for h4, followed by knight e5, and he managed to win a nice game. It was an online game, so it's not that important, but still, 
he managed to won quite beautiful game here d takes c5, Carson resigned only 22 moves an impressive achievement by Hikaru so he opted for the same line but instead of short castle after knight d2 uh, Rajabov went for the solid knight d4 this is the drawback of delaying the move c3 so if you play c3 then the plans with bishop c6 are not that strong because the pawn on d3 is always a weakness uh, but there is no knight d4 so that's why bishop takes c6 and c3 are the main moves here and after knight, pawn, knight d4 exchange his worst piece guys if this pawn lands to c3 this knight is dominated by the pawn so this knight on c6 is dominated by the pawn cannot go to d4 very often d4 comes with tempo and that's why uh, white, black quite often uh, maneuvered the knight to g6 so a typical idea is to exchange one pair of knights white is forced to take bishop d4 and then white played c3 so he's in a hurry not castle yet bishop b6 and then d4 interesting idea so if short castle then after c6 bishop a4 d6 after d4 black can simply castle probably even take the pawn but simply castle and there is nothing to worry about without this time this is a perfect version of italian game uh, black is doing quite well here so that's why nakamura played d4 immediately when black is not in time to answer it with d6 it seems that taking the pawn is quite risky because e5 will come and if you take the pawn sacrifice after queen e7 short castle is coming and uh, i believe here nakamura's team analyzes this position in a great depth it looks very dangerous guys knight c4 will come bishop a3 will come so looks really dangerous Dmitry and Drakin tried in this position the move queen e7 uh, what can I say it's not losing by force it's not that bad but it looks deserves some attention but definitely the main line is c6 attacking the bishop again if you move the bishop somewhere doesn't matter where black can take the pawn or simply play d6 with the perfect position d takes e5 c takes b5 e takes f6 queen takes f6 short castle short castle and what we have black has very ugly structure but has bishop pair typical for modern chess have this pawn on d7 which is you could have some problems with it the pawns double pawn here and nakamura played an interesting move before a4 was played uh, by caruana against uh, Kramnik and also Sarana against Aravin but after b takes a4 knight c4 bishop c7 knight e3 b5 knight d5 queen d8 most probably black position is acceptable okay white has some compensation for the sacrificing pawn but probably not more than that Karwana won against Kramnik and Sarana lost against Aravin it's hard to make some conclusions here but I believe black is fine so Nakamura played very quickly the move queen h5 this was definitely his preparation so far and then what to do in the game Rajabov played the move queen c6 this was also played in the game in the Pomnesti against Levon Aronian which uh, Nepomne she won after the move knight f3 d6 rook e1 f6 bishop e3 so this is white's dream to end up with this knight against this bishop and with all these weaknesses so a6 take take queen d5 rook e1 Nepomne she won a pawn and later the game this is something that white wants so you need to avoid it any cost but uh, yeah 
there is also move knight f3, I forgot to mention, but it's not that uh, dangerous because after d6, rook to one bishop g4 in the game one forest against an Ishgiri, black solves all his problems with the move b4. Temporarily you have triple pawns, but it's obvious that something will happen on the queen side and most probably everything will be exchanged very soon. The game ended in a draw. So let's go back to queen h5, Nakamura's uh, idea. And then after queen c6, rook e1, rook e8, knight f3, d5, e takes d5, rook e1, knight e1, queen c4, takes 3. Definitely, black has some compensation for the pawn, but white has some pressure. His pieces are somehow randomly placed so far, but if he managed to coordinate them, then he will be better. And uh, we should admit that Nakamura didn't find the right moves. And at some point Rajabov equalizes, but later made some mistakes and went into trouble. And finally lost. After 6-7 hours fight, he finally lost the endgame. But uh, yeah, the position we can say that he didn't equalize completely after the opening. This is the, the, uh, the outcome, the objective outcome. I am really wondering as also many commentators, what Nakamura had in mind after the move d5. This was suggested by the engine, this was the most natural move here, in my opinion. So why to worry about this pawn when you can have uh, just very good development and b b the bishops will be really active. Uh, of course, somehow why needs to take. If he takes with the queen, I think black can solve his problems in many ways. He doesn't care about this pawn. He could play rook e8, followed by bishop g4. Very, very active. Later, a6, rook d8, rook c8. It's two pawns, but uh, he has very good compensation for them. And uh, probably the easiest way is to play b4 here. Great move. Again, sacrificing second pawn, but after something like queen h5. Then rook a c8 with the idea rook c2 or simply queen d4 gives black tremendous compensation. Uh, I'm pretty sure that black will win some, one of the pawns back and for the second one he will have bishop pair. Uh, I'm not sure if black is... Mm, who is playing for a win here, let's say. I would choose to play this one with black. Uh, objectively, white is not in danger, of course, he has many ways to equalize, but uh, this, types of this type of position is uh, quite uh, playable and mm, very, very strong for black. I mean, this solves the problem completely. It takes d5 is probably a little bit, um, a little bit stronger, but still here uh, black has a choice, he can enter the endgame. After queen f5, queen f5, h4, bishop takes f5, knight f3, rook d8, rook e8. Uh, you can see black's pieces. Uh, nothing can happen here. I mean, this pawn soon will be lost. Probably the best for white is to play something like bishop e3, try again to enter some endgame with this knight on d4 against this bishop. But uh, even here, with an equal material, Black is simply out of danger, it's just an equal position. If black wants to keep the things a little bit more complicated, he could play bishop f3 and after, uh, bishop f5 and after knight f3 rook f8. Uh, he's completely out of danger, queen d6 is coming, bishop, bishop g6 is coming, or bishop e4 is coming. The pawn of d5, d5 is quite weak. I can believe that black can have any single problem here. So, in my opinion, the move queen h5 after d5, d5 simply equalizes. But uh, if such strong players as Nepomteshi and Nakamura enter, the, enter this variation for white, probably they have something in mind. I should admit that I didn't find it. Uh, there is also a possibility that uh, there is nothing, that there is just a bluff. Uh, and if you fight d5, probably here after e takes d5 or queen takes d5, uh, 
White analyzes this position mm, deeply and uh, they find somehow to pose some little problems, but I'm pretty sure that the problems are solvable and the position is objectively equal. So this is uh, the game Nakamura Rajabov. Let's go to the next one. The next one is Young Krzysztof Duda against Dean Clearen. Duda with white pieces. He failed to mm, convert his advantage yesterday. And today he, fa uh, he faced Dean Clearen, who lost his first game with white. Italian game. Now Italian is very, very popular, mainly uh, because of the solid Berlin defense. Rookie one. A5. This is the line which also Grandmaster Kirill Georgiev recommends in his wonderful database about Italian for black to modern chess. h3, h6, stopping bishop g5, knight d2, and then here uh, Kirill suggested the move a4. He said it's uh, critical, and uh, the point is that sometimes you see this also later in uh, this game. White has an option to play bishop b5, bishop a4, bishop c2, and also after a4, uh, black can use this square for their pieces because the rook is coming here. Bishop b5 is critical. And then after bishop d7, uh, the whole point of the variation is that you cannot actually take the pawn with white because after this strong exchange sacrifice, knight d4, queen d1, knight d3, black is better and uh, won almost his all his games. So the pressure against f2 is uh, very strong and uh, black has tremendous compensation for the pawn, uh, for the exchange. Here, uh, instead of a4, instead of uh, taking the pawn, there's a move knight f1, there's also knight g4, and after knight e7, exchanging the bishops, knight takes d7, very, uh, very nice idea by Caruana, followed by f5 later on, black seems to, to be fine here. Uh, I should admit that uh, bishop e6 is also quite legal move, just a4 looks uh, somehow. A bit more aggressive, but bishop e6 is the main line. Bishop b5, this is what uh, how the game continues. And here the recent trend is knight d7. Again with the idea f5, let's say knight f1, f5. Black is using the fact that a white delays this knight f1, knight g3 maneuver for a while, and he could play f5. And in this position, we can say that Black is doing pretty much fine. This is the game Alexander Pretky against Shekhe Armomedialov. And uh, Shach uh, equalizes. And he has a, I don't think that uh, Black could be better. The game was very complicated at the end and it's still a draw. But knight d7 is the recent threat here. There's also move bishop b6. This is the favorite of Hikaru Nakamura. Bishop a7, d4, take, take, d5 some long lines like that. Black sacrifices the pawn, but he has bishop pair, control of the d5 square, very standard for this line. I'm not giving any evaluations here. I'm probably black, uh, black is fine, but white also cannot complain about it. So queen b8, typical idea. Queen is coming to a7. Knight f1, queen a7, rook e2. a4, cutting the way back for the bishop and preparing queen a5. Knight g3, queen a5, and then bishop takes e6. Pawn takes e6. There are some games here. This is the critical position of the opening in the game. Rustam Kazimjanov against Shekhryar Mumedarov. Shekhryar went into trouble after knight h4, rook e8, knight h5, d5. Knight takes h6, very interesting sacrifice. 
And then after taking bishop h6, uh, he played d takes e4, and after rook e4, he is just much worse. The game ended in a draw, but only because Kazimjanov uh, failed to cover his uh, big advantage. Here, some improvement could be bishop d7, uh, but it deserves some some analysis. I believe black is fine. Knight is seven is coming later on. Uh, I believe black is fine, but uh, still the position requires some knowledge. The other option is d4 with tempo. Bishop b6. And then again, knight h4 is an option, followed by something like that. But here, just black is just fine. In the game, Nikola Nikolovsky against uh, Jaime Santos. Uh, Jaime went wrong with g5 here, and so like he has a good position, but uh, everything else besides g5 is just fine. It's d5. It's just fine for black. So this uh, this knight h4 is not very critical. Bishop e3 is an idea, followed by queen d2 or queen c1, and take on h6. This happened in the game, uh, in one game. And after rook e8, queen d2, take bishop takes h6. So unfortunately for white, this looks very, very strong. Uh, white's attack looks uh, very dangerous, but there is nothing. There is nothing after taking knight h5. Um, white has no attack, the queen is very very strong here, and knight g3 is a threat to win a piece, but if you take then after queen h5, bishop h3 is a threat, queen h6 is a threat, black is simply better. So uh, Duda went for bishop d2, which is a novelty, an interesting one, here bishop b6 was played by Ding. Queen c2, not queen c1, because queen c1 will be met by king h7, and still this rook is not to play. So queen c2, king h7 still, and c4. Queen a7, bishop c3. So now there are some ideas, for example, if you skip the move, white has an idea to play d4. And after e takes d4, e5, and take on f6 with uh, an initiative, let's say, at least. Something like that looks very, very dangerous for the black, although the computer is not agree with me all the time. But Ding's move looks very natural, knight g8, he wants to play f6. Now d4 just doesn't make any sense, because after taking e5, nothing is hanging, and after king g8, black is much better. Uh, so rook d2. Threatening to play d4, and then a very interesting move. c5 was played by Ding. Uh, you can say that um, this move closes the diagonal, but uh, these pieces are stupid, but leaves white without ideas. f4 is hard to be reached, d4 is hard to be reached, and these pieces somehow lost sense. And f6, rook e2. Queen d7. So the outcome in the opening, the computer already likes uh, black. He played this g5, which is quite committed. Uh, the game finally ended in a draw, but I believe the outcome of the opening is positive for black, and uh, black did quite well after this bishop d2. I'm not sure if this bishop d2 followed by c4 will gain popularity. Knight h4 needs uh, just close attention, d4 needs attention, but uh, this bishop d2 followed by c4, in my opinion, doesn't pose any problems for black. So later the game ended in a draw, and then we will reach the last game, which is Jan Nepomneci against Fabiano Caruana. A game Italian, this time not with a5, but with a6. a4. We have a database of uh, Boris of Ruh here. It's quite, it's a bit outdated, but it's still good. A4 is a recent trend for many years. So before they play mainly bishop b3 with the idea to match knight a5 with bishop c2, so to save the bishop. Now they save it with a4, and in the meantime, gaining space on the queen side. So bishop a7 is a useful prophylactic. Rook e1 a6. Just to mention, the move h3 is inaccurate here. 
before Sword Castle, before Black loses to Sword Castle, if White played h3, g5 is coming, and there is no way to stop g4. Remember, guys, there is no way, even after knight h2, g4 is still coming, and after taking rook g8 is coming. Fold by knight g4, fold by queen h4, the move f3 is not possible. This is very, very dangerous for white. Of course, Jan uh, well known with these ideas, he played knight bd2, and still, nevertheless, here the main line continues short castle, and after uh, h3, here h3 is good, there's rook e8. Uh, with the idea of bishop e6, rook takes e6, there's bishop e6 immediately, uh, there's knight e7, there's even knight h5 here. So the theory just started after short castle, but Fabiano played the move g5, even without h3, so there's no hook, still he played g5, and it's quite interesting. Here, the most natural reply, knight f1, is not the best one because after g4, if you go knight d2, then h5, and somehow h4 is coming, knight c7, knight g6, looks promising for black. But if knight h4, there's knight e4, d takes e4, queen h4, followed by knight e7, followed by h5. Not clear if white has something for the pawn. So it's better, you will see white, to keep the knight on d2 for a while and play the useful move before gaining space on the queen knight. Then, if g4, knight h4, knight e4, white can take with the knight. So d5 trick is not working because after bishop d5, queen d5, knight is losing its queen, winning its queen. And if queen h4 here, there is d4 stroke move and uh, white is in big big trouble so this king is really risky to go on the king side you cannot take because of some checks f5 is the only move according to the engine e4 is the only move according to the engine and then after something like b b5 or queen b3 white has tremendous compensation for the pawn and uh, much better position i'm sure that Nepomniachtchi was aware of this there's also knight h5, there's knight e7 played by Alexander Grischuk against him, and after knight f1, knight g6, bishop e3, followed by d4, white won this game, it was internet game, so nothing special, but still, Nepomniachtchi uh, has some knowledge here, but Caruana played knight g4, which is a novelty, according to in my database. Probably it was played in some computer games, in some correspondence games, which I don't have, but uh, in my opinion, it's a novelty. Knight g4, quite logical, attacking the pawn. Then, how to continue? There are two ways to defend the pawn. d4 is not very good, so he needs to play rook e2 or rook f1. Rook f1 takes the square for the knight, and the rook was on f1, but gives this knight another square e1 could be important something like queen f6 queen e2 knight e7 d4 knight g6 knight b3 still looks looks promising for black but it's not so clear h5 is not possible knight f6 is not so clear if it's good or not and bishop e3 will come soon so probably this was the better way to continue Nepomniachtchi play rook e2. I'm sure that after rook e1, Galano also has analysis. This was definitely a, a preparation for the candidate experiment. Queen f6. And then queen f1 is a mistake. Because it takes the square for the knight, and after queen g7, uh, it's hard to find a way to continue. I mean, short castle is coming, knight e7, knight g6 is coming, h5 sometimes is coming. Queen e1 was played. Then queen g7, Karano blitz his move. Nepomniachtchi takes his time. And h3 looks interesting, but after castle, when the rook is not on h8 anymore. But still, this gives this hook g4. And even though, in my analysis, I cannot actually find, probably knight g4, 
how uh, black can take advantage of this it's uh, it's obvious that Caruana was a bit uh, Nebonish was a bit scared for to go for h3 especially when his opponent was blitzing out the moves he went knight g3 first knight e7 and then d4 typical idea it's a pawn sacrifice so if black managed to if white managed to consolidate his position he loses better but the pawn is hanging not immediately of course because then after e2 3 followed by knight d4 White has very good compensation, uh, but knight c6. Here after something like bishop b2, it's possible to take the pawn. I cannot see why why black should have any problems here. Black is a pawn up. I think the black is playing for a win. Rook e3 was playing by. No, but okay, we should say that for sure here. It's hard to win, of course, it's probably some kind of draw after rook c1, uh, black king is weak, so there should be enough compensation. So rook e3 was played very interesting idea, knight d4 and then rook d2 was the computer suggestion, very, very interesting move with the idea knight takes f3, rook takes f3, knight e5, otherwise bishop b2 is coming, still bishop b2. And then knight f3 is mistake because after g takes f3, those bishops are really strong. And after queen g6, rook d5, for example, threatening at some point queen c3. This is really, really hard. Threatening knight f5, even rook f5. This looks lost for black. Of course, black is not forced to take. He could play something like g4. And then the only move to keep the advantage is rook c3, which is incredibly hard. But still, uh, at least it's clear what White wants to do somehow. The computer sees no problem at all. He said, okay, it's kind of equal, but I would be a bit scared. Of course, without an engine and when your opponent is blitzing out the moves, it's hard to go for something like that. Very hard. Knight e5 and just bishop b2. But definitely this was improvement. Repondish she took on d4, play bishop a2, and after c5, take bishop c5, rook b3, b5, strong move, queen f6. He went for some king side attack, which finally was successful, so not exactly the attack, but somehow visually, all white pieces are looking on the king side, and uh, Caruana is out of book already. He's better here, but uh, he decides uh, later on to repeat the moves in probably better position already. I will show you the game until the end quickly. Bishop c1, rook g8, bishop b2, and here simply rook b2 gives a big run. Rook b2, rook b2, you can play a3, you can play very strong d5 move uh, with the idea sometimes to have queen f5 here. Okay, it's hard, it's hard. Uh, to find this, but uh, a3, rook b7. Yeah, this looks, this looks dangerous. We should be, we should agree. Objectively, black is fine, but uh, black is better. But it's hard to understand that during the game. Say, take rook b7 and then just bishop f2, strong move. Rook b3, four by d5, four by queen d6 at some point. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, to find this over the board, so we shouldn't be that, I think. That harsh to Caruana, this was a good game. The outcome of the opening was positive for black, and uh, now all the theoreticians and uh, with strong machines will start digging on this move, 9g4, move 9, on move 10. Uh, so far it looks quite, uh, quite good, quite reliable. Very interesting with the idea queen f6, queen g7, or by knight f7, knight g6. At some point, we have even some sacrifices on f2. So you can try it in your games. It was definitely the probably the first major opening surprise of the candidates tournament. Okay, guys, I hope that you 
you like the theoretical coverage, that you learned something. Uh, so we'll keep you updated for the next rounds as well. Enjoy the games and if you have any feedbacks or something to say, if I make some mistakes, you are feel free to correct me. You can always write us an email. So I am waiting for your replies. Goodbye.